some problems that my, my, my family used to go through was domestic violence. It was hard and then my parents had to immigrate to the United States. My sister and I were living with, me, with my grandparents. Later on, my mother called one day and she said, uh, get ready because you are coming. You're, you're coming with us. And I, and I was just like in, in shock because like I didn't want to come. I, I had my friends, I was, I was in a school and uh, I just didn't want to leave my country. We, we started living in the Flatbush neighborhood. Put it, my mom put me in this middle school. She put me in a bilingual class. Even though that, even that that class was bilingual, they didn't like teach me like, you know, the the basic English. But that like, that didn't didn't stop me. When I graduate from middle school, I I realized that. Well, I'm undocumented. I just thought that going to school was not a good option. And one day I came back early from high school. I came back to my house and I sat there and my mom, she was like, oh, you came early. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, uh, I don't want to go to school anymore. I want to start working. I feel like I'm not doing I'm not doing well in school because like, I'm just thinking that I want to start working and, and support you. And, and, and she, was, she started crying. She was like, but you are doing, like I, I always thought like you wanted to go to school and you want to do something in your, with your life. And she was, and I was like, mm, yeah, but I mean, I'm gonna end up like my sister. I don't, I don't like, we are undocumented. We, we, we don't qualify for like for college. He let me drop out high school. Three days later, um, I started looking for a job, but I, I like I wanted to to look for a job in a mall or in a clothing store. I couldn't I couldn't make it because I didn't have a social security card. Only options were ninety nine cent stores, uh, fruit stores where you have to work twelve hours a day and then restaurant. So my first job was a 99 cent store. I, I was cleaning, um, fixing the, the items. I worked when, until I turned 19 years old. Yeah, I, I worked for two years. I, yeah, and then I got pregnant. So I stopped working. When she turned one, years, one year old, I, I was thinking, I wanted to do something for me, like to do something about my life. But she, my daughter was too young, so I just continue um, taking care of her. When I had my second child and my, my, my daughter, I put her on the Head Start program. She was three years old. And, and then when I started like going to her school and and going to these volunteering um, workshops, that opened my eyes like, wow, there is a lot of things going on here. It's not just bring your child to school. Um, there is a lot of opportunities out there. There's one lady uh, that I always will thank her because she was pushing me like, you should do this for your life. You should go get your GED. And, and every morning when I, I, I will arrive at, at, at the school, she will, she will say, oh, hi, how are you doing? Um, did you, are, you looking, are you still looking for, for school so you can f get your GED? And I, and, and I would just like, oh, yeah, but I, I was not doing it. Then finally I, I, got, I got enrolled in this program for, to take my GED the classes. Getting my GED gave me like a self-confidence, like, okay, you can do this, now you can do more than that. I made an appointment so I can apply for DACA. So I applied for DACA, I got it, um, and wow, my, my life changed. I, I, I was accepted in B, at BMCC, because like when it was time to apply for FAFSA, <laughs> I was like, what is FAFSA? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they, they were telling me about it. Um, and I was like, oh, I don't qualify for FAFSA because I'm a DACA student.
I went to the office of the scholarship and I finally got it and that's what helped me. I was able to register in college. I was um, able to apply for a scholarship and that like that really impact my life. Yeah and one thing that is a lot of pressure for me is that to, to still like to be to qualify for the scholarship is that I have to be full-time. It's a commitment that I have to be doing like either if I want it or not I have to do it because like I have to if otherwise I'm gonna lose the scholarship. I think it's time for me to pay back to my community. I think it's time to um, to support others. Like, I I think that I, I already received the help that I needed to receive, and I have to do something for others now. I know I know what it is to go through this struggle. If you drop out of high school, go back to to school. Don't do it. Um, that's the worst decision you can ever make. Because there are a lot of opportunities out there, but you just have to look for them and um, you can do it. <laughs> they can do it. Um, if, I, if I did it, I know, I'm sure that they can do it too. But just don't, don't give up.